How you guys doing? I'm Jamie, that's Hamish, and we're doing like our first collab here. So in this Hi video, <laughs> we're going to have a discussion about quality versus quantity in online video. So, you know, this is basically, which one do you go for? Do you go for both? Do you go for one? Do you go for the other? You know, how do you measure this? And I think that is where we, where we have to start this video. Mm -hmm. How do you actually know if, how, how do you know what, what quality actually is? Yep. Because there's a million YouTube videos out there, and, and, and VidMe or whatever. How do you know quality when you see it? What do you think? Okay, well, one of the, one of the things that I chose was quantity. And I think uh, there's a bit of research out there done by other YouTubers, and I'll probably link that. And they're saying that uploading regularly is really, really important for the channel. And um, I've taken that responsibility of uploading daily. And I think that quality does suffer because of that. But one of the things that uh, that quality improves over time, because I get faster at making content, so it's pushing myself and my boundaries. Mm. Yeah. What about yourself for your channel? Well, how do you measure qu quality? You know, I think, okay, uh, what I think is that there is a wrong conception out there people on, on on what quality actually is I think people look at the, uh, the the numbers that a person is producing and think that that is that means quality and I don't think that's how you measure quality I think quality is is a balance between what your finished product looks like versus how much preparation went into it and this is where the channels like um, Freddie Wong for example get my huge huge respect Freddy Wong, he's, um, I think he's like an Asian American guy. He makes these videos where uh, he had this whole season called Video Game High School. Uh, it's basically short films and a lot of it is action, you know, uh, uh, martial arts, action, stunt work. Every single thing you see in his video is scripted. Uh, what the characters say, uh, the camera shots, you know, it is storyboarded, it is completely scripted. Mm -hmm. So there is an enormous amount of pre-production that goes into that video. Um, here's the problem though, you can, you can do that and you can produce that kind of video and then your video can go out there and get 10 views and then maybe six months later it's up to 30 views. Five years later it's got 200 views and when someone watches it five years later and they see oh it's got 200 views, um, they don't necessarily equate this to being quality mm -hmm. and you know that is where it's you know, I, I think it's really hard for, for, for you to show quality and for, for you to people to, to like to, to get people to recognize quality. Does this make sense? Yeah, I, I guess one of the thoughts that I'm having about this is, is quality important or is it the ideas? Is it that initial idea that's important? And does that represent part of the quality? Because you may not have the best technology, the best camera, the best equipment. But that doesn't stop you from producing. And that is what you're producing, not quality, because you haven't got the best gear. Um, Casey Neistat actually said an interesting thing, which was, we are going big. We're doing it this, th we're doing this the big way. Many months of effort went into like this moment right now, which is amazing when you see what it looks like. But it's challenging for me, because I would have just shot it on my cell phone in like five minutes, but this is, this is what it looks like when you do it their way. This is when you do it the. This is what it looks like when you do it the big way. So big, I don't. I think the saying says like big doesn't always equal better, and I think that's an important kind of aspect when you're talking about quality as well. Mm. So part of this, when you choose quality or quantity, I mean, how do you measure work-life balance? Because whatever, whichever approach you take, it's going to have an impact on your life. I mean, you've actually got to go to the toilet, have a shower, do your laundry, cook your meals, go to school, go to work. And you've chosen daily vlogging. And daily vlogging honestly is brutal. Um, it's not so bad if you're gonna make a short video, like a lot of your videos are quite short, which is quite good. Um, especially when in this day and age with attention spans that are measured in nanoseconds. But, I mean, what's daily vlogging like for you? I mean, is this, 
sometimes a burden on your, on your life to, to, to just spend hours videoing and editing, editing every day? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the recording part of it is such a small part of it and it's the bit that's the most interesting and the editing part of it is the most time consuming most disinteresting um <laughs> y you know you're sitting there y you're aware of the fact that you're doing very little exercise and it's probably not particularly healthy because we're talking about lifestyle and whether this is good for you so when when you're making that three minute video you can end up spending eight hours editing it, it and it comes back to what, what standards do you want to set for yourself. Um, I think some really good ways to, if you're just starting out in YouTube for example, I think some really good ways to get some quality content and to get quantity as well is I found it much easier for example doing a video game because we get the emotional reactions when we're filming ourselves playing the video game and we get the interesting engaging content for the people watching because they're seeing all this action happening on the screen so that's a really good way to start out and a lot of youtubers are, are doing sort of gaming content and they're you know they're seeing very successful channels yeah See, there was a, another YouTube channel out there called Veritasium, and he's this guy that does science channels, and he made a, a video about quality versus quantity and which one you should choose. And he, he pretty much came to the conclusion that quality actually wins out at the end of the day, because if you put out quantity, something every day, but the, but that but because of time constraints, that well, that one video every day, it's it's not necessarily good or it's only relevant to what happened during that week. It's terrible. <laughs> you know, you, you put out a video that's not so great and it, it doesn't have, um, the, it's not evergreen. You can't come back to it in five years and then watch it and it's still relevant. And on the other hand, if you put quality in and, uh, you know, and in particular evergreen content, which is, which is relevant and it's good no matter when you watch it, then this new person comes along has a look at your content and then goes back and re-watches all of your old episodes um, and that is I think that is the, that is the danger behind making stuff constantly that is um, only relevant to what's happening this week like if you try to make viral videos all the time and you're just trying to capitalize on what's happening today and this week uh, you might get some views but as soon as you stop doing that uh, nobody's watching your channel anymore because mm -hmm. you know you're <laughs> Why, why do they want to go back and watch your old stuff, which related to things that happened five years ago? Yeah. I think also about the whole quantity thing is that there's this personal connection that goes on in YouTube. So people are watching the videos are also typing in comments and you're replying to those comments. So you're building online relationships with people. And that perhaps doesn't happen if you're just producing quality because you're only producing something once every few months or once a month or however long it takes and that relationship between you and your audience is disappearing because they're waiting and then they kind of forgotten about you oh what was this guy on about oh i don't know whether i really want to be part of that channel anymore or you know so they they're losing interest um because you haven't kept that quantity up it's an interesting side of the argument too yeah uh, to, to, to the, the long and short of it, I don't think there's actually a right answer to it. I think it depends on, on so many factors. It depends on, on you, the person, you know, also your content, you know, the time, uh, the time it takes you to make the video, the, the, the time of the year, and, and like, and what's happening currently. I mean, like, recently, there is this whole movement, and we're going to talk about this in another video, about possibly leaving YouTube and all of the, the massive changes that are happening in YouTube right now. So what you're planning to do today might not be what you're actually going to be doing in a few years time or, you know, or even a few months time. You, you, we don't know really what's coming down the pipeline, but that's, we've got that coming up in another video. What are our final thoughts on this? I mean, we've presented some, some things to think about here. What, what are your final thoughts on this? My final thoughts are, I think that uh, you can have a mixture of content on your channel because A, you do need that audience to stay connected to them and B, they need to have some stuff that is decent to watch or to bring new audience to you. Anything you want to add to that? Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, we'll see you in the next video.